Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. I don't mean just like you know when your eyes are closed but you're kind of looking through you're still kind of peeking I mean when you actually got your eyes closed no peeking and uh, there are no longer any websites I don't mean in the entire world I mean for me I've got rid of every single website because basically this is not very interesting I, mean, it's, I know it's not supposed to be but I just got I can't afford to keep doing it I can't afford to run this free service um, the way I was so I've eliminated pretty much Everything except the podcast. Not just this podcast. Or you know, I've still got all the forty-five podcasts. So the only thing I'm paying for now, other than broadband, the internet, is the Spreaker podcast, where all my stuff is, and then it's distributed throughout the internet. You know on various podcast hosts like Spotify and iTunes and all that stuff. So, part of the reason for that is because I had some money. I actually had a donation or a gift it's not more of a gift rather than donation because I'm not a charity but uh, I was gifted uh, $25 which ended up being about £18 and uh, I didn't take it I didn't transfer it into my bank straight away I waited two days or maybe one day I don't know but if I had transferred it straight away I could have gone to the, the bank and drew that there would have been enough there to draw out £20 because I had a couple of pounds left in there so that would have been £20 in my pocket but I left it too late and I had £27 taken out of my account before so I was minus £29 or something so when I did put the PayPal money in I still owed seven pound. Well, I don't know, something like that. So it's a bit annoying. And then I had my my stepmum's birthday party to go to, and I couldn't afford to go, which was today. And I owe my, <laughs> this is weird. I owe my dad fifteen pound. I'm an adult. You know, I'm nearly 49, but I owed my dad £15 towards my stepmum's birthday present because they got uh, this lovely bracelet and me and all the other like kids uh, put in £25 each. So I'd already given my dad £10 when I saw him last. Plus there's a travel of like £12 to get there. So... So in the end, I borrowed fifty pound off a friend until Wednesday when I get paid, and I went up there and I actually so it's last night Andre's just come to do a poo, lovely. I can't believe such a small little creature like him 
can be so heavy footed. And now he's scratching again, so I'm going to have to check him out. Make sure he hasn't got fleas again. That's going to annoy me. I'm grumpy. I just had one of the. I just had one of the best days of the year, and, and I'm moaning. So. Last night, I just thought, that's it. I'm going to have to get rid of everything. Cut down every expense that I, that I don't need to pay for. So I got rid of Netflix, Amazon Prime. Um, yeah, but I had Amazon Music as well. As well as all the websites all the other podcasts and just got rid of everything so I'm still on YouTube and I still got the you know the podcasts what's weird though and I don't know why the stats have gone down massively today I've got like um yeah, about 1,600 or something downloads. Or yesterday, rather. Instead of the 2,500 that I kind of normally get. I was like, surely the websites weren't giving me that many downloads. <sighs> um, there's no longer any advertising on the podcast as well. So there's it's I'm kind of everything's now on a it, what do they call it a shoestring everything's now just still running I'm still going to make the podcasts but that's kind of it I'm not going to be I've determined I'm never going to make, ever make another website ever again and I spoke to my brother today my little brother He's not little, but he's younger. He's bigger than me, but he's younger. He's a big, massive. Do you know the, um, do you know Ghostbusters? Remember that big, big tire man? That's what he's, he's not, no, he's not like that. But he's, he is, he's, I'd say he's bigger than me. He's gotta be, I mean, a good 15, 16 stone. Big, strong, strong young lad, strong young lady, and uh, he actually is an IT professional. That's what he does for a living, and he builds websites and all that stuff. And I said to him, no, no, "Never ever make another website ever again." That's it. I'm done with websites. I'm done forever. And I said to him, in the future, if I do need a website, you know, I just said to him, "Can I need you to do it for me. And he said, no. I said, please. And he said, no. I said, please. Please, and he said no. But then, just as I left, he said, "Yeah, I'll do your website." But it, it won't be maybe in a few years. I can't foresee me really needing a website unless I start selling something. Uh, I don't mean my kidneys. I mean, if I started selling my books or courses or. MP3s, videos, I don't know if I started doing that but um, yeah I'm never ever ever going to build another website that's it and I can build websites really quickly but I'm not doing it no more I'm done, I'm done I'm done, 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 done with that so 
I'm going to I'm just going to continue making podcasts and helping people if, if you know if I can and not so much getting back to basics because I like to think that I kind of have progressed from basics you know back in 2006 but uh, yeah I'm just going to make the recordings stick them online and that's it I'm just going to continue doing what I was doing anyway but what's weird about it is I really struggle to watch television without doing something else I'm so used to watching television or a movie or whatever it is while I'm online like building a website or doing something like that and to just sit here looking at that television screen and to not do anything else I find a bit boring a little bit like mm, it's not really stimulating me you know so I don't know maybe I need to do more press ups who knows I don't know so, but yeah, so that's that's it. Websites are all gone forever and ever and ever. Although I am going to keep the domain name. So jasonnewland.com is going to stay with me forever. I'm never getting rid of that. So that in the future, if I do need a website, that will be my domain name. I'm going to keep that. So I'll just pay that yearly, 20 quid or a year, whatever that is. Um, it's probably more than that actually it's about £28 a year or is it 94 I don't know the, so yes yeah, so I'm not going to pay for anything else because that's it I've got enough for food bills and that's you know it's kind of a shame because I, I do actually enjoy the website 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 side of things a bit but then I find myself getting really caught up in it you know to the point of uh, being hungrier but not wanting to stop because I'm sort of in the middle of doing something or needing to go to bed but kind of wanting to sort of stay awake because I want to finish what I'm doing which on some level I think is a really good thing you know that's passionate isn't it being passionate about something and you know wanting to really kind of get it done So I've now freed my brain up a bit. And I'm going to start making some more. Well, I can't really make any more recordings of what I'm already doing. Because I've been doing like probably three a day recently. But I'm going to maybe look at some new new kinds of things I can do because I know that some people really like these ones the let me pull you to sleep some people really like the deep sleep whisper hypnosis sessions uh, so Yeah, some people really like the anxiety ones as well. The 
relaxation hypnosis for anxiety, and obviously stress, anxiety, and panic attacks. So they're popular also. So those three, three kind of podcasts are pro- like probably the most popular ones. But there's probably other stuff that I could do as well. I'd like to do more chronic pain relief, but I don't want to spend time making recordings that no one listens to. And the pain relief podcast just isn't isn't popular. It's not it's not got hardly any listeners. So it's as if the the only thing that the only real thing that people like what I do is the sleepy stuff. I mean, in a way, in a way, I would say that my chronic pain relief stuff is better than the sleepy stuff. Um. Uh, maybe not, I don't know. I'd also say that I reckon the... I've mentioned this the other day, I think, the some of the, the longer recordings that I did for the Hypnotic Buffet, Hypno Chats, uh, I don't have one, Healing Hypnosis, Live From My Bedroom, you know, things like that were really good like quite um, quite deep in some ways which doesn't really go together with this podcast I know right I've been serious long enough let's let's talk about family so I managed to borrow some money yesterday from a friend. Unfortunately, the problem with borrowing money from someone on the phone is you then got to listen to them for about an hour talking about their life. So, yeah, I kind of used up a fair bit of my phone credit on that. And uh, it's not just listening, you've got to kind of pretend to be interested. But <laughs> it's okay. And uh, so I intended to go. You know, I thought, yeah, I've now got £50, uh, which left me with £40 because £10 went out of my account straight away. I went up to the bank, got to the cash machine last night, drew out 40, that's all I could take out, and I thought, ooh, and uh, I think I had 15 pounds still, so I had 55 pounds altogether. And then I, went to the shop I think and I got some what did I get I got a few bits from the shop so I got some hot cross buns or some tea cakes or was that the day before might have been the day before. No, I'm pretty sure it was yesterday because I walked down the country lane and I didn't take Andre with me. I just went on my own. Or did I? No, I didn't. I got the bus. That's it. I got the bus. 
there and then I waited and got the bus back that's it yeah so I got the bus to because I was waiting around in the rain for probably about 15 minutes and I got the bus to the shops and got some tea cakes and this was last night I'm pretty sure or like yesterday afternoon time late afternoon and this this is Friday not Saturday because to me this is still Saturday even though it's Sunday at 4 5.02 in the morning and yeah I got on the bus got there got off the bus I crossed the road so I remember I pressed the left hand um, traffic light sign instead of the right one not instead of the right I didn't not the wrong one instead of the right one but the left instead of the right because there's there's a big knob you can touch on either side so I touched the one on the left and the traffic stopped I crossed and I went to see what time the next bus was and there was plenty of time so I walked to the shop I got what I needed and then I waited for the next bus and again I think I waited for about 15 minutes for that one but this time there was shelter um, I don't mean like the homeless charity I mean there's there was shelter like a, a bus shelter did they call it yeah bus shelter the thing is this isn't very good because the buses it's like on a there's like a little I don't know what you want to call it a corner where the bus comes round so the buses can't see the bus stop until it's pretty much there already and it goes right past unless you put your hand out I mean you could have a stick with a big like flappy fake hand and like stick out in the road but it's a hassle to carry around so it's a case of just keeping an eye out and then quickly jumping out not like jumping out of the bushes you know rain mac but but just because otherwise you've got to stand further up so the bus can see you but it means getting wet and there's all these bushes these trees that block the view of seeing when the bus is coming so that you see it just as it's coming so literally you know the first thing you see is it coming towards you well not toward but like you know past you on the road and then this this lady came along and she starts just talking to me and she sits down and then she's looking at her phone so I'm the one st on doing the lookout for the bus I think we should have took turns Why was it up to me? I, I, when the bus did turn up, I kind of partly felt like just ignoring it and letting it go past. But then that would have kind of messed me up as well. So, Logic won over spitefulness yet again. So, then I, yeah, so I, so I begged for the for the fifty pound, and I got. I went to the 
to the cash point to the you know to get some money out so I got that out and I came home I always find it's good to get back and I just wasn't sure what to do I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get out of bed or whether I wanted to go and do this you know go up and visit family today or yesterday or the day ahead from where I was then and then I spent the next few hours deleting all the websites and everything like that and about three o'clock I felt tired and I went and had to lay down and I woke up about eight o'clock and I thought hmm I can go can't I I can I could just go there which is what I did so I got ready had my breakfast I did leave it a little bit late so I missed the bus so I needed to walk to the train station and by the time I got there I was all sweaty which is uh, it's not always a good start to the day so it was a yeah I was just sweaty and I got um, I got there with about five minutes before the train was going to arrive and there was a queue of people not only outside on the machine but also inside and uh, a lady came up to me and she said are you in the queue and she, I think she said is this the queue I said I hope so and I don't know if that came across as rude I didn't mean it rudely just factually because I'm queuing so if I'm in the wrong queue or if I'm if it's not a queue and it's just people just standing there randomly you know then it wouldn't be great but yeah I got my ticket it moved fairly quickly and train came got on the train and there was two trains to catch not at the same time but the first one took me somewhere and then the next one took me to the next you know where I was going and when I sat down on the first train And I, yeah, I'm not sure if it was the train, the first or the second train, but I sat down at one point and someone sat opposite me. And I can't, I just look around, I'd like to know what's going on, who's around me. But then someone sat and there was this, I had my earphones in, just listening to um, Jim Rohn, who's. Uh, motivational speaker so I like to feel motivated when I'm travelling on a train quite motivational it's it's not specific for me you know it's not like he's saying go on Jason you can sit there you can continue sitting there look out the window just sit there it wasn't that kind of motivation and but there was someone behind me on the phone talking loudly I actually thought it was a tannoy system but it wasn't it was a person behind me so I thought oh nah I thought I want to move but uh." but then I put my hand down and my hand was wet so the seat was wet on 
it might have been the condensation from my water bottle. But, you know, I wasn't going to take chances. And I did have a little sniff of my finger. But, you know, I mean, to be fair, whenever I sniff my finger, I'm not really sure what I'm smelling. So I kind of, I didn't want to take the chance. So I, I got up and moved to a different part of the carriage. And then I thought, oh, does this look like I'm being rude? But I kind of got over that thought quite quickly. And then on the way back on the train, no, it would have been the first train, not the second train. The first, on the way back, there was some Man, well, I guess by the by the amount of hair on on the hand, it was a man. And she had his hand right behind him, so he was in front of me, sitting in front of me. But he had his hand wrapped behind the head rest, so I was basically facing his hand, and. I'm pretty sure there's no actual legal laws that says that that's not acceptable. But I'm pretty sure there's some social laws un, unspoken that you don't do that. It's like, what on earth are you doing? Because for me, when I'm sitting in a chair or, you know, seat in a bus or a train, that space between me and the back of the seat is mine. It's not mine, I don't own it. But I feel like I'm kind of renting it temporarily for that space of time that I'm occupying that space of the seat. And he's wrapping his hand. It's like, do you remember the Mr. Tickle books? The Mr. Men books. It was like, that's what his arm was like. It was like wrapped around the chair about seven times. Like, what is he doing? But I just, it's like, oh, I couldn't understand it. <laughs> it was just, it was like, what? Honestly, I, I half expected him to start tickling my knees. Like, what are you doing? Get off me. Okay, we'll carry on, but just be quick. It's like, just very strange. So I get to, I get off the first train there, on the way there. And there's about half hour um, wait until the next train that I'm catching. So... I'm just waiting around and I get I I go out I go out of the train station for ten minutes and the train inspector not just a not just, but he's he worked on the I don't know what you want to call him he's station worker or whatever and so you got all these barriers you have to put your card through to get through. So I I knew that I couldn't put my card through because that was only half the journey. There's a chance it could have took my card. So I said to him, "Excuse me, mate. Uh, I've got my card here, and uh, I just want to go outside for a bit. Is that all right?" And he said, "Yes, my friend." And uh, he let me through. So I went outside. Lovely day, really nice house. It was. It wasn't bad inside, but it was a really nice outside. And quite busy, you know, Saturday afternoon. Or actually, I suppose it was still Saturday morning, but it was getting. It was probably about half ten in the morning. And it looked like people were getting ready to go to the football. 
not everybody, but the, the pub opposite the train station uh, had three doormen swapping jokes. I, I guess they were laughing and stuff. And uh, I think that they would probably only be there they only have uh, security on the doors during the day when there's football. So, uh, I mean, they probably just swallow, just swap in prison stories or something. But they were having fun anyway. And I went back inside. I tried to put my card going and back in and it refused it. It went dee 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 like that. So I thought, okay. Because I do understand Morse code. And the, the the ticket man, he was still there. I guess he's, he hadn't finished his shift yet. And I uh, said, hello there fella. Yeah, he's not letting me in. I saw you earlier. But he just, he didn't seem as friendly towards me. And I thought, well, it's only been, at the most, 12 minutes. I mean, I can't, I can't imagine that I'd have done anything to offend him in that time. I mean, all I did was just go outside. It's not like I went outside and started kind of mimicking him. You know, just... I don't know how I would. I mean, I don't know, just met him. Even the best mimics, you'd need to know the person a little bit, wouldn't you? Before you start sort of imitating them. I suppose, I, mind you, I could have just like, have you got a ticket? Have you got a ticket? Have you got a ticket? I suppose that would have been quite a good imitation. So he let me through. I had, I had a ticket. And then I went into the shop, which was inside the train station. And I thought to myself, you know what? I'm gonna get myself some mints. I don't mean mince meat. I mean like mints as in... Uh, Uh, mint, mints, uh, menthos, you know. So I got them, and then I thought, ah, oh, perhaps I'll get myself a, a bottle of Coke. And I went and looked, and I wasn't sure how much they were, so I walked up to the the counter. Well, I partly walked, partly skipped, but you know, I got to the counter and I said to the lady, You right, lady? She said, Yes, thanks, fella. And I said, uh, How much is this bottle of Coke? And she said, It's £2.15. And I said, Oh. And she, she looked at me, she said, Oh, is it too much for you? Can't you afford such a huge amount of money? Oh, poor you. She pat me on the head. and uh, So I put it back. I said, no. I refuse to pay £2.15 for a bottle of Coke. And she said, why? I said, because I've got £1.95. That's all I've got. She said, fair enough. And uh, we danced for a little bit. You know, we had a little bit of a slow dance. Uh, had some music playing. It was a uh, lady in red. So whenever that plays, I always like, kind of try and dance with whoever's around. I've made lots of friends that way. I've been arrested a few times, but you know, generally generally works out okay and 
So then I went up to the train platform that my next train was going to come. But there was lots of people waiting for a train that was the one before mine. And I thought, nah, nah, I'm not waiting with this lot. So I went into the, like a, a waiting room. Not like a doctor's waited room where doctors work or a dentist waiting room uh, or solicitor's waiting room. It was, it's basically just, it's like a greenhouse but without tomatoes in it, but without being a greenhouse. And there's like th three sets of seats and so I sit in one so I sit I'm not going to sit where other people are sitting so I sit the other side and the seat collapsed not like completely on the floor and anything like that but it just it just fell back it was really weird it was like some kind of fairground ride and I thought, oh, I'll sit forward and it'll be all right. It's only for a short term. And at the time, there was two people sitting there opposite me and they were reading their papers or pretending to read their papers. I don't know. I got a sense that they were watching me. <laughs> Probably not. And then this big tall man comes in. He sits on the remaining bench of seats sits down and I'm just sitting there and just thinking probably only in about 20 not probably I don't know 20 minutes till the next train till my train and then there's this almighty bang inside this little thing this little waiting room thing and I looked over and it was this man and he basically he just closed his glasses case so he's got his case and he's just closed it it's one of those that snap closed he did that on purpose you don't have to let them bang like that I was astonished I was like what are you doing how what, where where is your head right now why would you do that in public? Make so much noise. Are all the things that I didn't say to him. And uh, then a young lady comes in, sits down, eats something. I think it's a sandwich. She basically inhales it. it it's as if... She had some kind of weird thing in her mouth that just melted the food. She just like pushed it in. It's like a magic trick. You know when people put something like a, a big balloon and they put it, push it into their mouth? That's what she did with the food. It just disappeared. But there was no jaw movement. I mean, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm just... Uh, it is... Uh, just a bit surprising. I mean, I, I was I wasn't staring at her, but I was kind of using my peripheral vision to observe. And then she got up and left. So uh, probably to get more food, I imagine. And she and then I went out and I waited for the train and. About another ten minutes, and they got there. Because I, I wasn't enjoying my, I wasn't enjoying the waiting room. It wasn't really everything I'd hoped it would be. So I went and uh, stood on a platform, and eventually the train came, and I got on the train, and it took me to where I was going. Everything kind of worked out okay. There was uh, 
there was this woman on there and she had blonde hair really quite striking um, I don't mean she had like a placard saying we won't go back to work till we get our pay rise but she was she looked a bit like um, is it Agonita from ABBA she had that kind of I quite like that look I like you know, not really that fussy, but I quite like the um, Swedish kind of look. Something about it. I don't know why that is. Um, but also like Spanish girls, so you know that's complete opposite, isn't it? From being like really fair skinned and blonde to dark skinned and dark hair and brown eyes. You know, I just. I'm just anyone that's willing to kind of put up with me really so I smiled at her on the way out and she grimaced and uh, so then I I went into the garage because of a garage there a petrol station and I, I thought I'll get a, I'll get a bottle of coke here because it'll be cheaper. And I went and I've tried to figure out which one was which. And they had a different section. They had all these different flavored cokes, but then one different section with a a, a bunch of letters underneath, which basically represented the sugar tax. So it's more expensive. And I said to, there's this uh, young lady who's working. She's, I think she's standing on a ladder. And uh, I've got a rule. If I see someone standing on a ladder, I like to disturb them. You know, just disrupt what they're doing. It's just one of those ongoing uh, hobbies of mine. And I said, do you know how much that bottle of Coca-Cola is? So she had to get down the ladder, stop what she's doing, disrupting her flow. And she came over. I don't mean her flow. You know, I'm talking about what working-wise. I don't know any like, internal stuff going on. But she came in and she said... Well, she didn't come in. She was still there. And we went over to the... I mean, it wasn't a long journey. It was like two footsteps to the counter where all the Cokes were, the fridge. And she said, oh, that's where the sugar tax is. I said, so it's about one pound. It's like 40, 50 pence more. And I said, oh, I didn't want to say that I've only got, like, I didn't have enough. You know, I really only want to spend about 150. And she said, oh, why don't you get one of them? And I, before she, st when she said that, I thought, "Don't start trying to push me onto something different. I know what I want. I want a bottle of Coke. You know, I kind of knew straight away." She's gonna say, "Well, why don't you get the Diet Coke or the Zero Coke or the Pepsi? What about a lemonade? What about a packet of crisps?" Like I thought, no. You know, I just like, I know what I want. I don't need you to re recommend something else. That's what I was thinking. But I thought, I'll look down anyway, because she's recommended. And she pointed towards a much bigger bottle of Coke that was just one pound. So a bottle that was twice the size of the one that was one pound 90 or two pound or whatever. And I thought, Wow. I remember saying to her, that's, that's ridiculous, isn't it? And she said, well, no, I'm just trying to help you out. I said, no, no, I mean, it's not your, you're not ridiculous. It's ridiculous that they're selling something twice the amount for one pound to the other. And she said, yeah, I know. I don't know why that is. I said, do you reckon you could find out? And she said, I don't really want to. 
I said, oh, fair enough. And uh, so I, you know, I got that. That lasted me pretty much all day. And uh, and I walked. I said thank you to the. the well, what well, got to the, the till, and put the bottle on there. And the, the lady behind the till said, "Any petrol?" I said, "No, no thanks, no thanks. I just just a coke. I don't need any petrol today, thanks." And uh, she looked at me a bit weirdly. But that might have been because she had three eyes. But yeah, anyway. So then I walked up to my dad's and got there. And see, they didn't know I was going because I sent a text last night saying that I wasn't going. Because at that point, I didn't think I could afford to get there. And it turns out in this situation it was it's better to or sometimes maybe not all situations it's better to say you're not going and go than to say you are and not I suppose depending on the circumstances isn't it I mean if it's if it's a wedding and you're like the bride or the groom then I suppose that could be classed as playing games couldn't it or indecisiveness so I got there I got there too early they were just faffing around putting up decorations and because I had the garden all done out and uh, uh, I mean well, it's not decorated like with paint but I had this big marquee and yeah there's a lot of work put in and I'm putting up bunting and stuff up and I was watching because I don't do manual work and it was just I got there too early I really did and yeah so it was like three hours of just I kind of got to talking a bit but once you've kind of said hello to someone and kind of caught up with them, you know, it's, yeah, nothing really happened until about three o'clock. And then people started turning up because it was my stepmom's birthday. And that's when it all turned. It was lovely then because my auntie that I haven't seen I haven't seen her for years and I would really get on well with her really do always have and she she was there so at one point she was there talking to my brother so I'm standing behind her she doesn't know I'm there and uh Eventually, she still doesn't know I'm there, so it's a bit, a bit awkward. So I, I move around so she can see me, and then she gets all excited and she hugs me, and I, and I start saying ah to my brother, she's forgotten all about you now. Now she's seen me, her favourite nephew, me, 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 and uh, quite childish, really, wasn't it? I suppose in hindsight, and. Uh, I said to her, oh, it's my third favourite auntie. I've only got two aunties. And uh, she, she thinks she likes that. And we were just talking, it was just like catching up. And she had a new boyfriend that I've met, not met before. He was really nice. And everything kind of turned, it just became much more fun then. Because it was nice when I first got there, but then everyone was like busy getting ready for the party, and I'm just, oh, just didn't have anything to do because uh, I wasn't willing to help. So I just, just sitting there really, <laughs> and 
Oh, my dad gave me a coat. So just before the party started, my dad said, Oh, you haven't seen a bedroom yet, have you? We're decorated. And I said, I've never seen your bedroom. What's the point in showing me your decorated bedroom when I don't know what it looked like before? And he said, why are you so rude? I said, I'm, I know you're not. I just, I don't go into your bedroom. It's just, I never have. Even when I lived with him, I didn't go into his bedroom. Just, I don't know, just it wasn't. But then I realised that was a lie. Because I have been in his bedroom, I think once. And that was when I got a job uh, in a call centre. And I had no clothes to wear. You know, he lent me, I didn't have a tie, so he, he gave me a tie, a couple of shirts, because we're roughly the same size really nowadays. He, and, he, you know, so he sort of helped me out. So I have been in his room, but I think that was the only time ever. But he had these coats, and he was like, well, you can have one. The brand new coats, winter coats. So I said, well, which one do you want? Because he had, I think, four. He, he, did, he hadn't stolen them. <laughs> it's not like he's, uh, like, selling stolen goods. It's just, he's had these coats for years that just, he hasn't worn. Like, I don't, I don't know how long, many years, but they're just really thick winter coats, proper... Uh, big thick things and and I said wait a minute I bought you this last Christmas he said yeah you can have that back I hate it I hate it I absolutely hate it sometimes I just put it on the floor and I just just stand on it I said come on that's a bit, a bit over the top he said yeah I know but I hate it sometimes I feel like I want to cut it up and use it as toilet paper Dad, that's a present. I said, oh no, I can't help it. No, he didn't say any of that. And he said, uh, so he gave it to me. He said, and then he, he he gave me my £15 back. The money that I gave him towards a present, he gave that back to me. He said, oh, you can add that back uh, to help with the travel. So that was really kind and then he gave me my Chris my birthday present, but it's a card, so I've, I can't open it till my birthday. It's like, oh wow! So I got this nice jacket, brand new, I had the label on and everything. Um, it's not Armani. It's mine. <laughs> it's not Armani. It's it's just. It's going to be really good for the winter. And I suppose that hence the winter coat. But anyway, my auntie was there. So I was talking to her. And I found out some stuff I didn't know before. So, of January, did not know this. Did not know this. So my mum, my biological person that you know, popped me out of her pelvis. She left when I was five months old. And she came back again when I was two years old. But in that period, my auntie and one of my uncles tried to adopt us. You know, they got a house. Uh, they were going to basically bring us up with their kids. So it's kind of like a family effort, if you know what I mean. And my auntie had another child that was pretty much exactly the same age as me. I think within like a month or so, we were the same age. Uh, or maybe six months. But the social services refused. They said no. Because something about... Uh, because she had a kid and... and a, because they were a family and there's something like that but they social services wouldn't let them adopt us and it was too much for my dad because there was three of us 
and he was just on his own and this was the 70s and in them days men did not bring up kids you know it wasn't it just didn't happen really and it was the I don't think the social services the the benefits and stuff I don't think he would have there wasn't the help there that there is now I guess but that was really interesting like I didn't know that did not know that she actually she could have been my mum my, she would have brought me up and I, I would have thought of her as my mum and I, I never understood why I had a connection with her but apparently I spent loads of time with her from the eight, from even before because she was best friends with my mum before I was even born they were best friends and so I spent loads of time with my aunt when I was a baby and for the first you know two years of my life before my mum came back and got us so I spent two years with her so two of the most important years of your life like developmentally like brain and stuff it's like wow so that's why I had that connection with her kind of an imprint sort of thing and uh, yeah so that was that was very enlightening really but that was lovely to see her and I was just acting all silly and saying silly stuff and all that and uh, having some fun I had a I had one and a half bottles of lager And I was a bit tiddly. Or a little bit... You know, no, no means drunk, but just a little bit affected by the alcohol. And in a way, I kind of wish I could have stayed. But I didn't have anything with me. I didn't even have a toothbrush. And I didn't... You know what I mean? I would have just been sort of sleeping in my clothes and... That's why I came home. But before I came home, I I went over and said hello to my niece, who's now 11. I've never had any kind of relationship with her. Never really kind of... I don't see her very often. I see her like maybe once or twice a year. And when she was little, of course, she was a lot of fun and, and stuff. But she forgets all that. She doesn't... There'd be such a long distance time between seeing her that I think she forgot who I was. But today, or yesterday rather, I was sitting there and I was just thought, I'm just going to talk to her. And I had her laughing. She was creasing up laughing. And I just, I realised, and I always knew this, but I didn't, didn't knew it, I didn't know it would take this long that my, my only real way in to having a relationship is by communication, like verbal, like having a laugh. And it's taken this long before I could do it. And she just, she was really open to it. And it was just, just saying funny things and we were just verbally, um, like jousting kind of you know that was really good and then I realised that my and I got a lift home I got a lift to the train station by my stepsister or my I don't know sister-in-law stepsister or something like that and I realised that my mental maturity is that of an 11 year old girl that's my level of maturity. That's where, that's where I can communicate. I was like, wow, who'd have thought it? He was all these years thinking I was about uh, a seven-year-old level, but actually I'm not. I'm actually 11-year-old maturity, so I'm much more mature than I thought I was. So there you go. So... I'm basically emotionally an 11 year old girl that's weird but 
it was lovely just to see her smiling and laughing and to be able to sort of communicate and connect with her like for the first time really ever and uh, yeah and then when I was going to go I was sort of saying goodbye to everyone and she was just standing there with her arms open waiting to give me a hug goodbye and she's, I don't think she's ever done that before either it was like wow that's brilliant so it's I got made a new little friend there which was nice because I just I've had uncles and stuff I've only really had one uncle that showed any interest in me when I was younger and it does make a difference you know if you can kind of connect on a and it has to be a personal level a connection that they don't have with anyone else I think that's probably with all relationships but it's nice to just have like a personal connection rather than just uh, turning up for family occasions and just being another uncle or another aunt let's just have like a a personal separate thing and she loves reading and I love reading we both love books so we've got that thing in common and yeah so that's really cool so what else happened and I got yeah I came back I yeah so I left got the train back so it's Mr. Tiggle with his arms wrapped all around the chairs so he was there so that was like oh and then yeah when I got to the next train station there was yeah the train didn't go to where I wanted to go so I ended up having to get three trains but eventually I did get back and then I was walking home and I got home and uh, gave Andre a big cuddle and he hadn't trashed the place which is good so I hadn't seen him for 10 hours over, yeah over 10 hours it's really rare that I go that long without seeing him and I just realised it was a really good day it is yeah, the best day of the year for me so far it's really lovely just to get to be silly for a few hours and Yeah, get to see my little brother and my niece and my auntie. And, you know, of course, my dad and my stepmom and all that stuff. So it was, it was a good, good day. And right at the end, just before I was leaving, my dad called me over. Because um, he was going to see me out and say goodbye and stuff. But he called me over to this bloke who with a, a lady there and he said do you remember him I said no bye he said no wait 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 this is do you remember when you worked at Tank Freight yeah he he was in the office with you I said dad it was 33 years ago I said no offence mate I don't remember you I'd and he said oh you filled out a bit and you had more hair back then I f- and this bloke, he couldn't, he only looked like he was probably in his 60s himself. So I don't know how he remembered me. Uh, lovely bloke, I just don't remember him. And that was one of the worst jobs I ever had because I was really rubbish at it. And I wanted to be good at it, but I was really rubbish. And what made it worse is, my dad worked there as well 
he was a, he, he had a different job, so I didn't work with him, but I was in the office, and he he was on the, the he was an electrician, and I just I was absolutely terrible at the job, and I left in the end. I just couldn't didn't like it, but this man remembered me. Like wow, it's just like the way so you filled out. And he said you used to be skinny. I said yeah, well we've all we've all put weight on, haven't we? When you know everyone puts weight on. He said yeah, but but he was quite he's still quite slim though. Um, but yeah, that was just really weird. Just like oh, so we had a little kiss. And uh, and then I left. So that's that was that day done. Came home and I had a couple of little naps. So tired. So I had really well, it took a, it took quite a bit out of me really, but it was a really really good day. I'm going to leave it there that's that's the story of my day and I at one point my uh, I was outside and I came in that's not the whole story and uh, my stepmom was in the kitchen with two of her friends and she introduced me to them she said oh this is Jason and one of them said oh you're you're your dad's son I said, yeah. And then my step, I said, yeah, and mine. Oh, it was so, it was so lovely. She like grabbed me, like, like gave me a cuddle and said, and mine. Just so like, because she's my, she's been my mum sort of for 33 years or whatever. And uh, I said, yeah, she is my mum, even though she's only 11 years older than me. I was like, wow. It's not a lot, is it? She's actually closer to my age than she is to my dad. She's 13 years younger than him and 11 years older than me. Isn't that weird? Not weird, but interesting. Well, not even that interesting, really, is it? Or is it 14 years younger than him? I don't know. She's 60 just turned 60 and I'm just about to turn 49 so that's you know literally 11 11 years and two weeks or something and my dad's 25 years older than me I don't know you work it out but it was like and she seemed really happy. My dad was happy. Every everybody was just having a really nice time. And no, it was it was good. It was, it was a really good time. And uh, yeah, I thought it was anyway. So I'm going to go. Thank you very much for listening. And I shall speak to you very soon and I can't I'm not sure what number this is but I think for my 200th episode someone has recommended that that I do a live Facebook broadcast so that's probably what I'm going to do so I need to plan that that makes sense I need to plan it so what I'm thinking is was it Sunday? I'm gonna have to first of all find out what day I'm gonna do it, and then make sure that I'm there at that time on that day, and I'll do a, a live Facebook broadcast for the Let Me Bore You to Sleep, and we can do a little like Q and A, just say hi, thingy magic. So take care, everyone. I'll speak to you very soon. 
lots of love. And remember to be kind to yourself. Be extra gentle. And say nice things to yourself. Because you deserve it. Take care. Bye.